Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and a how-to video on how to use Neo Echo's two-stage airbrush. I got this a while back, I showed you the unboxing. It's time to show you a how-to video on how to use this thing. So let me show you what I got set up here. First off, two-stage airbrush, down for air, back for paint, back up for to shut it off. Always, whenever you're going to use these, push down first, then bring your paint on, then bring it all the way back, and then take your finger off. That way you don't get a big buildup out in front here, and it just <laughs> doesn't spit on your, on your project. Um, this also came with the uh, quick disconnect that I really, really like. I use it all the time. And the other thing I want to show you today is, first off, let me show you the Neo Echo Air Compressor. Um, they asked me if I wanted to do, or I would do a video on how to use the air the airbrush, and which I told them I would, uh, I was planning on doing that anyhow. And they said, well, here, before you do that, let me send you a few things out. So they sent me out this really nice air compressor. Um, it's just a real simple basic, I mean, you can't get any easier than that. It came with the air compressor, uh, plug adapter, and five feet of really nice hose. I, I, I mean, really nice. I like this. So, let me turn that back off. Uh, what I did is I put the quick disconnect on the hose. This is, I mean, this is the whole setup for this thing. I put the quick disconnect on the hose. I screwed the air separator that came with the airbrush onto the compressor right here, this piece. Make sure that your Schrader valve is all the way out when you turn it on. Um, you'll know, see how this shuts off? That means your Schrader valve is seated and your airbrush is ready. If your Schrader valve is not seated, it'll keep running. So make sure your Schrader valve is seated. And this is to where um, any water that collects isn't just going to go blasting right down through there. I got it tilted just a little bit. So this is on the high side and the low side. And it still sits nice and flat on the table. It's, it's, it's really cool. Check this out. So this is off. That's on. The green is high. So let me get my airbrush out of here. The green is high, pull for air, it turns on and sprays. Let go, and it stops. There's high, that's medium, and you can hear the difference in there, and that's low. Back to high. All right, so I'm going to turn it off for a second and put this back in. Another thing that they sent me is a real nice cleaning pot. And we'll talk about this when, uh, when we're done and we're cleaning up. But what I did a quick unboxing of this and how to put it together. Uh, I'm going to post that. I'm going to post the quick unboxing of the Neo Echo air compressor and this video all at the same time. So there'll be three of them hitting the market. But... This is so nice. It's, you use it to clean. You put your, your airbrush in there, pull back, blow all your paint, your, your cleaning solvent down inside here. There's a little half moon in here that all the paint hits, drops down into the, into the bottom. And this has an air filter, so all the air comes out and it's not all full of dust and particulates. The other thing is, see how this is split? Look at this. That airbrush fits in there beautifully. So I have since, because I, so I, I did spray today, and I, I've been practicing just to make sure I know what I'm doing with the new compressor, um, and to make sure that the compressor was actually going to work, because I'll be honest with you, I'm not going to show you guys anything that I don't like, but I do like this. I like it how it's quiet. Jeez, oh, Pete, my pipe pen compressor is a billion times louder than this thing, and with the pipe pen compressor, I can fine dial in 
the actual pressure, but with this and this, I can do the exact same thing with my air knob on the bottom here. Usually I leave this wide open and just go to town. But if, say I'm, I'm shooting too much air and I'm blowing the paint out a little bit, I can throttle this back a little bit here and there to get that just perfect. And I I did play with that a little bit earlier, but I found that with the number five tip and the way I thin my paint, leave this wide open and everything goes really nice. So I'm gonna put this in the pot and I'm gonna set it out of the way. We're gonna move this over to the side of the table and listen, it's on. Listen to how quiet this is. I mean, you can hardly hear it. It's so awesome. And, and like I said, I was very skeptical about that compressor until I used it. And, I <laughs> and I'm not anymore. So today we're going to just do a real quick um, Model T Roadster. This goes for an AMT drag racer that I'm going to do down the road. But it was a good subject. It's easy. It, it's small. And I can uh, give it a quick... I wanted to use Tamiya's Blue on this anyhow. And I want to show you guys how to prep Tamiya paint. Now I put this, I used my little uh, Badger paint mixer on here already, but it sat for a little bit. So I am going to give it a shake and then supplies I'm going to use. I'm going to have the paint. I'm going to have X20A thinner. This is for the acrylic paint. And I'm going to use Tamiya's uh, paint retarder for acrylic. Now let's get mixing here. I have pipettes that I used to uh, to mix the paint and the retarder and the thinner. The other thing I have is I have a couple of uh, plastic spoons. I use these so I can test the paint spray to make sure I have it uh, at the right thinness for the pressure, the needle, and all that. And I'll show you that here in a second. You can use whatever you want. These work good for me and they're cheap at the dollar store. And if you look, they're pretty close to the same consistency as the styrene on the models. And that's why I use them. I can get, I don't know, a couple hundred of them for a couple of bucks. So let's start with the mix. What I usually do is I'll get a couple of pipettes of the paint. Pull it up there. And squirt it in. My little shot glass, I get the shot glasses on Amazon. I can put a link um, in the description for those. I think they were like nine bucks for 200 of them. Uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but believe it or not, I do go through them pretty good. So there's two shots of paint. Now with the thinner, um, I usually go like one to one and a half pipettes depending on the thickness of the paint because you know the paints are all whoops didn't get a whole shot there we go i know i need one full one and i want to hit it again because that paint felt a little thick so i'm going to go that much right now and i'm not going to put all that in either put that down there when you do this with a pipette Give it a quick stir while you're squeezing the pipette. And then suck it in a few times and shoot it out. And before I worry about my thickness, I can see that's just a smidge thick. I want to put my retarder in here. Now this, another pipette, different one than that, just to keep things separate. We go by drops, and I go 13, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, is there a reason 13? No, that's what I've found works best for me. <laughs> now I'm going to stir this up, and with 13 more drops in here, we might be pretty good. Uh, still seems a little bit thick. Put a few more in here. 
And this is all by eye, guys. I mean, there's no set. Everybody asks me, you know, how do I mix it? What's my, what's my mix? Um, my mix depends on the thickness of the paint. There we go. See how that's running real quick? It kind of just runs down there like milk. Like skim milk, almost water-like. That's what I'm looking for. So let's see if we're good. And don't get into the mindset that, well, okay, well, that's mixed. Let me shoot. And it's not perfect. I'll struggle with it. And no need to struggle. Dump it back in there and mix it again. If you got too thin, you can always add a little bit. Too thick, you can always add the thinner. But 13 retarders is what I, that's my main thing. I always do that. So I'm gonna use the pipette. We're gonna put it right in the bowl. Now, normally I would have my filter running and all that, but so we can all hear, <laughs> I'm not going to. I also usually have paper towels down here that I shoot in and I wear a glove on this hand that I don't have on today, just um, because it's easier to film. So let's see what we got for mix. I'm just going to blow this right straight into the filter right now. Air on, spray on. Look at that. Okay. Let's see what that looks like here. Air on, spray on. I'm not pulling all the way back. I'm giving it a light coat right now. We'll let that dry. I'm not putting any spray out. I'm just going to blow dry this real quick. Look at that already starting to gloss up for us. I'm using the air just to hurry this up a little bit. Usually by the time you get done painting something uh, and you go to the next part and then you come back to this, it'd be already dry. Tammy is awesome that way. So let's hit it again. Pull back and go over it. I'm going to go a little bit slower, try to get a little bit more coverage. we go and see now we're starting to get coverage on it I'm um, a little thin on the sides I went a little heavy that's my fault and this this paint will do that um, it's just the way it is hit it again with the air now that it's tacked up and I'm gonna come across this way this time so air on paint on and I'm gonna give it a good shot Watch that smooth out. That's that retarder doing that. How about that? You can see my ugly mug in there. How cool is that? Now, I'm happy. Are you happy? I'm glad you're happy. Let's move on to the Roadster body. And, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about how to use this. But here, look at I have double-sided foamy to hold this. And then if I sat it down, it was too short. So I did double-sided foam tape to another um, clothespin just to keep it off the ground. And what I like to do is I like to come around the bottom first, around the opening up top here. I'll come quickly around here, and then I hit the body. So let's do that. Air on, spray on. Come around, get those edges, flip this around. And this is a lot easier to do off camera, trust me. Air on, paint on. Do the top real quick, this way. Air on, paint on. Keep the paint running, come across and down. And then we're gonna hold. So there we go, look at that, there's your edges with a quick shot. Now let's do a quick run over the whole thing. I'm starting to back just because that's easier for me. Air on, paint on. Quick shot. We're just giving this a tack coat right now. And you see I'm kind of far back. Just going back and forth. Give coverage. There we go. Now that's my tack coat. 
And I'm going to do another tack coat here in a second. But I already see gloss on here. Tammy Paint's a wonderful paint. It's so forgiving that even I can paint with it. I'm just blowing dry, blowing this dry. You could use a hair dryer on this too. Uh, I don't have one down here set up, so I'm just using the air from the compressor. And that just shows that push straight down as air, pull back as paint. So I'm just pushing straight down. And that compressor, how about how quiet that is? Oh my gosh, it's, it's a joy to work down here with that. All right, let's hit it again. Air on, paint on. Come across, get these nice on the bottom, stop. Come down, air on, paint on, get the top. We'll keep going. Let's roll this out, get the sides. We're gonna get some paint on here now. Come across the top, roll over the side. And I'm following that panel line there. If you were wondering why I'm going this way. All right, now I'm gonna start in the this side. Let's do it right here. Air on, paint on, and I'm gonna come across. Look at how nice that's going down. Really nice. Let's go this way here. So you can see how nice that paint is going on there. All right. With that, I'm gonna blow that out just for a second. Now we're gonna just, we're gonna be patient here a little bit. And while we're patient with that, let me talk again about this. Um, like I said, this is just a quick cleaning cup. Uh, it, it makes a whole lot of difference and just neatness. Uh, I love it. Let's look here. Look at how quick that tacks up. We're ready to go. So let's hit it one more time on the base. This time we're getting it nice. Same with the front. Good coverage on the front. We're moving quick now across the back all the way around the edge all right now let's come across this top i'm working down and i'm putting a good amount of paint on but i don't have this airbrush pulled all the way back i'm about halfway with it now i'm pulling back a little bit give us a nice coverage here let's roll it and keep on going Keep on going. No sense in stopping, right? Got good roll, good coverage. Good shine to it, too. Look at that. And I think I want one more coat just to even this out. Guys, there's no primer on this. This is just straight paint. <laughs> uh, most of the time with the, with the Tamiya's paint, I can get away with that. It just lays on there nice, and now I'll, I'll let this sit for a couple of days to harden. But see, it's nice. It's got a good shine going on it. I'm going to hit this one more time, just to even everything out, and I'm going to hit it hard this time. So are you ready? Watch this. I'm done doing the edges. The edges are good. The front I'll hit, but the, the bottom edge is good, nice and clean. Ah, uh, you know what? No. Watch. Ready? Now it's good. I had a little bit of light spot there. Now we're going to put some paint down. This is called a flood coat. And I'm moving pretty quick here. I'm going to have to stop. So I see I, I brought her away. Don't ever stop on your paint. Air on, paint on. I just needed to move my hand. Look at that paint fly. There we go. And that is how you put down a, a nice coat of paint using Tamiya's paint. I love Tamiya paint. And a retarder makes everything smooth out. Look at the gloss. It's going to dry that way, guys. It's actually going to dry smoother than this. It will level itself out in probably five or ten minutes. At the most, it'll be leveled and done. So I'm happy except for right here. And I'm not going to be shy. I'm going to hit it. I'm going to come back across that top. There we go. Now I got a good even coat. Nice flat. Good shine. This will polish out really sharp. There's my paint. 
Now let's get to cleaning this. Uh, anybody can do this. If I can do this, anybody can do this. Let me get this out of the way. We're going to bring this up. I'm going to set this in it right now. Try not to step on my cord. Put that in there. Let's get this out of the way. We'll get the retarder out of the way. I always leave my... Check it out. Look at how that leveled out. My ugly mug is in that picture. I apologize for that, but that's impressive. Not my ugly mug. How shiny that is. <laughs> With that compressor. So, I mean, if you're looking for just breaking into this hobby, jump into that compressor. Let me move these. I want to get my cleaning supplies over here now. There's my airbrush cleaning solvent. And Neo Echo also sent me some of these. I've never used these before today. And I will never not have these now. So I'm going to order a bunch of these from them. Uh, they said they're going to have a web page up and running with all their stuff on it. These come with the kit. They're uh, bristle bottle brushes made for the kit for the size and everything. Little reamers in case things get clogged. And I will do a clog video on how to unclog. I have a few of the real nice Q-tips. And the... the uh, wrench. I'm going to put the wrench. I'm going to put these. I'm going to put these back in here. I just wanted to show you what we had. I'm going to get another cup out here. I use a lot of these, like I said. Put that there. Oh, uh, the other thing I did, and I didn't do it. I always put this on. I didn't put it on because I wanted you to see the paint going through it. But when you're painting, this just drops on there. It keeps dust from getting down in there. But I, I left it off today just to show you how things were going. So let's put that in there. We got this. We got our pipette for the cleaning solvent. Crack the knuckles. Straighten them out. Let's clean. And if you do this um, every time, this thing's going to last you forever. No kidding around break this out right now. Do, 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 do. Listen to that little airbrush. <laughs> I do. I love it. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't hear a, a, a car drive through a forest before. Look at this. See, I got the paint in there. Let's, let's do some. Give ourselves a break here. I put that all the way down in a hole and suck this out a few times. It just, it, I don't know if it helps or not, but it helps me. Now let's clean out this cup. Look at that. I've done paper towels a lot and it just does not, it stinks compared to doing this. I'm just will not look at it. How quick. Nice and easy, that cleaned out. No, we're not throwing that away yet because we're going to use that a bunch. Next thing I want to do is I want to take this. I'm going to put it in the sprayer here. I'm going to pull the gun. And we're going to spray out all the little bit of paint that's still in there. Go back and forth a few times. And then I'm going to come over on the side. My filters get changed often because I do this to it. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. Those filters, I can get those um, at Home Depot real cheap. I put a good squirt in one cup, and then I take another cup, and I put another shot in there. Just like that. And there's a madness for my method. So now we're going to do... Pull this out. See, you got paint inside here. That looks really cool, doesn't it? That's a neat color, but I'm going to take this first. Let's do it this way. I'm going to take this off first. That way we're not going to mess this needle up. 
by taking everything else off. Pull that. I'm loosening this up, and the needle pulls straight out. Just like that. Look at the paint on the needle. Now what we'll do, is we're going to set that right there for now. Take this cleaning brush, find a nice or cleaning rag, find a nice set, and just run it up and down it a couple of times. Baby your needles. Always go this way, too, because that end is sharp. It'd go to the bone quick, fast, and in a hurry. Your needle's clean. That's all you got to really do to that. I'm going to set that back here. Um, my stand is in the way for where I put all my stuff, usually. So I'm kind of out of sorts that way. Now I'm going to take this apart. And what I'm doing is I'm taking off. This is your jet. This is the jet cover and the cone. Uh, it comes with two of these cones. I like this round one, but sometimes they stick and you got to kind of tighten up on it right in that solvent. This one too, right in the solvent. And now we need our little wrench. And I'm going to take this need this jet off too. And I do this every single time I finish. Now I don't do it when I, I, uh, change paint. I don't take this completely down like this. What I do then is I, I clean the, the cup out real good. I run some solvent through it. I put my finger on the end and, and use, you know, blow it backwards into it and loosen all the paint up in there. And then I just keep running solvent back and forth until I get good clean um, paint. Now I'm taking this down all the way up. I always take my cup off. We'll set this down real quick. Grab our rag again. Wipe that cup off. Be mindful there is a gasket on this cup. So be mindful of that. Get your finger in there and get this good and clean. The cleaner you get it now, the easier it's going to be down the road. Because if you're a uh, if you let it go, it's going to catch up to you. I'm going to take the, this. These are nice. Look at that. I've never used these before either until just a couple of weeks ago. But these are so nice. They cost a little bit more than Q-tips. But as you'll see, they clean a lot better than Q-tips too. So we will get in there. And we got all the paint out. Look at that. We're brand spanking new. Nothing left. Everything's pretty. Give that in an air wipe. Put that down. Let's move on to this right now. Now is where our bristle brushes come in handy. I'll start out by wiping this off. Because I can already see they're on the threads. <laughs> I think I'm, I, I didn't tighten this up really tight. And I, I'm leaking just a little bit, so that's just popping on and off. There we go. Get that. I'm just trying to get that fairly clean. Now we're going to take this and we're going to go in here. And I'm going to clean those threads out. Get that down in there. There's a bunch of paint down in there. See there? I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to grab this and open it up. I'm going to take some of this, run it straight through, just to loosen things up. And you saw I just used a little bit of paint today, so it's not destroyed in there. But on a long day, where you, you're painting a whole kit, that can get pretty dang full of stuff again and I know you're saying hey you're just putting paint back through paint well give me a minute because I'm not gonna be I'm just getting it to be it's all broken up and look if you look in there uh, it's clean as a whistle already I really don't need to go any farther but I'm going to just to show you I'm gonna take my bottle brush I like using the bigger one I'm going to dip that straight in there. I only do that when it's clean. And I'm going to come in 
and go down this way with it. And look, there's nothing on it. Nothing at all. Clear that off. Now I'm going to take this small one straight in, straight out, and I'm going to go in the hole. Boy, this is a lot harder to do on film. And I'm going to go back and forth this way a few times just to break all that paint up like that. Set those off to the side. Take the pipette one more time. And boom, look at that. Now that is clean. Okay, but what I want to do one more time is I'm going to take a little bit out of here and I'm going to run clear through there. Shake it out real good. Let's get the rag. Find a clean spot on the rag. Wipe that out. Be mindful of this O-ring right here. That that If that O-ring goes bad, you lose that seal and... Um, you won't get paint to pull down through the through the suction. It'll just bubble up back into your uh, into your cup. So there we go. We're done there. Let's set that down. Grab my eyes. Now you're wondering why I have this thing here. I'll show you right now. There's nothing worse than chasing these teeny parts all over the floor. Because I'll tell you what, that I'm like I said, I'm using a number five tip. I don't think you would ever find it. So I take this, I run them around, kind of shake them, blow uh, solvent through them. Just while they're in the cup. And then we'll grab my tweezers that I forgot to bring over to you. I need my tweezers because my snicker bar fingers here. So let's take these out of here. Two and the jet. Look at how small that is. See that O-ring on there? That O-ring is important. Put that down. Now we are cooking with gas here. Let's start with the jet. What I do with this, because I have this in the way, usually all my cleaning stuff is all tucked right in here. I take this with this jet over top of that. See, this has a cone to it with a flat, like a reamer. Put that in the jet and just gently, I don't push down hard on there at all. Just kind of gently run that around to make sure that there's nothing in there. Um, trust me, in the long run, that will save you a lot of time. Because if that jet gets clogged, you will not have good paint. And this does not take nearly as long as it does while I'm doing it on film either. Because... My big head's in the way. Now there's a gasket in here. Remember I told you that little O-ring. So just bring this down and snug it up. You don't have to crank on this. Just make it snug. Okay, that's it. You don't want to tighten it up so much because you'll end up snapping that off or thread, ruining the threads in there. This is a tiny, delicate little piece. So that's all you need to do with that. Set that over there for just a second while we grab this. Grab my cone cleaner. Where'd I put it? There it is. I'll run that in here just all the way to the end. Clean that out. Make sure there's nothing in there. Take our pipette. Just a dab will do ya. Just grab a dab. Take it over here and run it through. I don't think I even had a dab there. Dab it and run it through. Just push it right through. Just get that all cleaned up nice. And we'll grab my towel. Come over here. Wipe everything off. Check it out. Make sure it looks good. Look at that brand new brass in there. If you do this every time, 
you're done for the night. Because think about it, you might wear back. It didn't even hit the ground. But it, if you do this every time, you'll save yourself a lot of problems. Because think about it, you're done for the night. Um, you might be done for the week with with airbrushing. Sometimes my airbrush will sit idle for more than a week at a time. Easy. So, how about that? I dropped that. It stuck right in the little thing in my shirt here. Got lucky. And again, I'd have this way inside here where if I dropped it, it would have gone in here. So, take some of this. Come over. Spray that in there. Get that wet again because it's been sitting out. Take my little brush. Scrub, scrub, scrub. That paint will build up on here. And when I uh, change color, I take this off and uh, clean it. It only takes a second. And that way I don't get a big build up of goo in there from uh, from the paint that doesn't fly all the way out. I like this cap um, because I'm in such a tight, tight area that that cap keeps me from banging that jet or that needle. Look at, see that should look brand new when you're done, just like that every time. If it doesn't, clean it. Now we're going to put the needle back in and I take my finger, put it on here because if I get shaky, I do not want to bend this needle. These needles are nice and straight. And when you come in here, easy all the way down because it has to go down past your, um, your valve or your trigger. And it could bump up on that trigger a little bit. And then I just ease it down all the way to the end. So when it stops, it stops. You don't have to jam it down in there. It's good. Tighten that up. And I do give that a good snug tight. Nice there. Take the cap. Put the cap back on, mindful of that little O-ring. Bring it down. Just a little bit past, you know, you don't have to crank it. Put the cap back on. Keep dust out of that thing while it sits. Put your back on, and I'm going to show you something with a back too um, that you might like or you might not. I never use it, but this piece is actually a paint adjuster. See, I can turn that all the way in, and it locks this. All I got is air. I can't pull it back, and then I can throttle this back a little at a time, and that. That goes a long way, see there? To where, again, with nothing, to all the way back. Now, I leave it all the way back, because you saw with that blue, what I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm throttling the, the paint back. It's rare that I'll ever go back to the stop, but I'll throttle that paint back and forth with this as I see how it's hitting the, the uh, styrene. And that way, you know, I can go with a really, real light coat, like I did on the tack coat at the beginning, a real light coat. And then the next time I come by, I'll come back a little bit harder. And then the third time I come by, boy, I'm coming back about three quarters of the way on this thing. And I'm giving a nice heavy coat to give it that shine. <laughs> uh, come on, man. I mean, really? How, how, how is that bad? Now you saw how this works. Just take it, put it in there, and pull it back and blow the rest of the paint out. You can blow the solvent out of it too, like when you're changing uh, colors. Let's okay. Let's say we're changing colors. All right. I just I just ran the blue through there. What I'll do is I'll come in here. I'll put some solvent in. I want to show you this because this is really neat. And I don't need paint in there to do this. I'll put some solvent in there. Let's put a good amount, just so you can see it. This is after I've already wiped it out with a little towel or 
like I said, I used to use paper towels. And now I would turn my air compressor way down. So now I'm throwing my air compressor out of adjustment too with my old one because that was a throttle, you know, I had a knob that I had to control it with. This one, I'm just going to push this once, twice to the red. And watch this. Put my finger on here, pull this back. And what it does is it washes out this chamber right here. See how cool that is? The other way you can do that, and this you do that same thing with if you get a clog, dump your paint out. Um, try that first. If that doesn't work, then you're going to have to start taking it apart to the, where we were before. But nine times out of ten, if you get a clog and you, you boil the paint backwards in there, it'll clear that out and break it up. And then you can wipe it out dry, blow out the solvent, um, and then put your paint back in and go from there. But here's another thing you can do, too, is you can take this, this back one. Remember, there was an O-ring there. Take that and pull it back. Now, I broke the seal on the O-ring. Not enough, I didn't. And see? And now it's not blowing out as much. But the same thing. I'm pushing, the air's not going out through the jet. It's coming back through this way, so it's not trying to pull the paint through. You can go either way. This way, if you got a clog, I'm not going to do it. Cause, well, you know what? To heck with it. Watch. <laughs> you can push the paint back out through there. It'll clear your clog. <laughs> but that's that's the way I usually clear a clog. And And to be honest with you, the way I mix my paint... And the way I clean at the end, I have only had one clog the whole time I've been doing this. And that was using um, Vallejo's. As a matter of fact, it was this Vallejo Surface Primer. And I, I think what happened is I, I, I don't use filters to thin the paint or to filter the paint, which I should. I should start getting them. But I think what happened was it, uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow this out to get all that solvent out of there. I think what happened though is a little part of uh, piece of paint went down there that was flaked and clogged it. So when I put that in there and I blew it back out, it cleared it right out. I was able to finish everything I needed to do and it was a win for me. So there we go. We are good to go for another day. Let's put this away. over here. I want to thank everybody for watching my video. I'm going to take that and put it back in that paint because this paint was a little thick and it won't hurt to have a little thinner in there. But I want to thank everybody for watching my video. I'm watching all my videos. Give me a comment, a thumbs up, a suggestion, whatever. Um, I will answer them all. I also want to thank Neo Echo for giving me an idea of, of making the video and then helping me along. They sent me out, uh, they made sure I had good needles. They made sure that I had um, good um, bottle brushes and then good reamers. You know, they made sure I had these wipes. I, I wouldn't have ever shown you the wipes. I would have used a paper towel. But now you know that these things are out there too. And man, I'm telling you, that clean that airbrush. Also for these. I mean, it's the little things. But mainly I want to thank Neo Echo for, for sending me this. Because this, to me, is a game changer. Because now I can have this running. I can come down here whenever and not worry about rattling the windows off the whole house where that other compressor. Because it was loud, man. I mean, it was very loud. And this thing, just, it's off to the side. You heard me talking while I was using it. So there we go. Let me clean up my thing. I will let you go. You all have a great day. And thanks again for watching.